for the confidence intervals uh, for the standard deviation unknown. Uh, it's more or less the exact same worksheet, um, except this time you are calculating it uh, based on the values right here. Um, and so uh, there, are, this uh, sample size is only 10. Uh, so you've got a point estimate, um, you've got uh, the 95% level of confidence, and right here it brings you through step by step to find the t-value. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and find the t-value. So you guys have access to the t-chart, so I'm going to, oh, don't worry about that. Uh, let's see here, we'll go to dashboard. I'm doing this thing right now with Amazon. I've got this, uh, I'm tracking this thing to see, uh, looking at the Amazon deals. Um, and I, I'm trying to find a data set uh, for your, well, I shouldn't, maybe I should tell you this, for your final exam that basically, uh, or for your last exam, that uh, compares um, deal prices uh, when they say that it's a deal as compared to not being a deal. Uh, and so right there, that was supposed to be a deal. Um, but we're going to go right here, um, and we're going to go, okay, so... Uh, we are going to come to the t-chart. So let's look at the t-chart. Let's open this up. And we've got this t-chart and we are uh, going to bring this right over here. Okay, so sampling, uh, so determine the degrees of freedom. Uh, first of all, the degrees of freedom um, is going to be um, n minus one. So this right here is uh, Let's see, it's going to be 9. So the degrees of freedom is 9. Um, so let's do this. Uh, step 1, 9. Um, um, there we go. Uh, degrees of freedom equals 9. Locate the 95% confidence interval column. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, at 95% level of confidence, what is your T-score? So we come right here, and I'm going to zoom in. And up at the very top, you have three columns. Okay? Or three, yeah. And so you've got the confidence interval. Uh, you've got the level of significance for a one-tailed test and the level of significance for a two-tailed test. We are not doing level of significance right now. We are doing confidence intervals. So this is for an 80% confidence interval, 90%, 95, 98, 99, 99.9. .9. Okay, right now we care about a 95% confidence interval. So this right here, all of these values coming down this column uh, right here are all corresponding to the 95% confidence interval. And additionally, it uh, continues down here. So. Um, I want to show you this really quick. These degrees of freedom go 1 through 50 in the first set, or sorry, 1 through 53. And then you come over here to the right-hand side, and these do 54 all the way through uh, 200 or infinity. So you're going to uh, have the 95% uh, confidence interval. Okay, and then find the degrees of freedom that intersects with a 95% confidence interval column. So we are, we've are we got a degrees of freedom of 9, so we've got the 95% confidence interval, and we scroll down, and uh, so the number that we have is 10, but that's not the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is 9. Uh, so the value that we need is 2.262. Uh, 2.262 is uh, the t-score, okay? So equals uh, t equals 2.262. Um, and degrees of freedom, the book uh, goes into it pretty well, uh, and I'll talk about it a little bit more uh, in a uh, different lecture. But uh, degrees of freedom um, basically tells you how much play you have uh, with the sample that you have. The greater amount of degrees of freedom that you have, the more flexibility that you have with... Uh, uh, being able to uh, assess different things. We'll, we'll get into it a little bit later. So um, we've got 2.262, and so uh, the margin of error is going to be uh, 2.262 multiplied by uh, the um, standard error. Okay, so what is the standard error? 
uh, we are going to take the standard deviation, so we're just going to control C. Uh, we're going to go into uh, file new. Okay. And then we're going to do uh, equals uh, standard deviation of a, let's see, is this a population or a sample? Uh, this is a sample. So standard deviation of a sample. And then we're going to highlight all of this. Okay. And then we are going to divide that by the square root of uh, 10, which is going to give us 22.84. Uh, so the standard error is 22.84, and so we're going to do equals 22.84 multiplied by 2.262, uh, which is going to give us a margin of error of 51.665. Okay, so I'm going to do times 22.84 uh, equals uh, 51 point uh, six six five so we're going to put uh, margin of error equals this uh, then uh, margin of error uh, which equals that that's the actual value of the margin of error um, and then uh, if you once again wanted to find the uh, the percentage margin of error um, you do equals average, okay, 242. Uh, so then the percentage margin of error is going to be uh, equals um, this divided by, and that's a 20% margin of error, or 21% margin of error. Uh, which I didn't ask for that right now. But uh, this right here is specifically asking for the confidence interval. So the confidence interval is literally going to be uh, the mean. Uh, so we've got equals the mean minus uh, the margin of error, and then equals the mean plus the margin of error. Uh, and so these are the two values, control C, and then we're going to paste the values. Um, and you can literally just put it like this, uh, 194 point, and uh, I always suggest rounding to four decimal places. Uh, three to four decimal places is good, but uh, we'll, we'll round to four. Uh, but those are the two values. So uh, you can put, oops. CI, okay, and then when you interpret this, these results, uh, the way that we would interpret it is um, the uh, expected, uh, we are 95% confident that the uh, actual population mean is between and so that means uh, we're not saying that 95% of the sample means fall between that no we're saying we are 95% confident that the actual population mean is between 194 and 298 which is a massive I mean literally it's huge, <laughs> uh, that, that, that span. So it's really not that helpful. Um, and then scrolling down a little bit further, um, you know, it just keeps on digging a little bit deeper. It's the same stuff, except value. This asks for a percentage. Uh, this asks for confidence interval. Um, and then uh, this right down here, it asks you to change a few things and for you to tell me, hey, uh, what changes when you change the sample size? What changes when you do all this different stuff? Um, and then... Uh, down here, we're getting into confidence intervals around proportions, um, and I only give you one question with around proportions. So, um, yeah. And then when you get into Excel, uh, complete uh, the, the section on proportions in Excel. Um, and so when we do that in Excel, it's going to be right here. Uh, you create a proportion. Uh, so it's the number of successes out of... Uh, failures now this is this is a little bit more this is a little different okay 
So uh, I'm going to show you guys really quick how to do this. So let's do uh, the sample data and you need to highlight the sample data. And the reason why you need to highlight the sample data is for a lot of you, you notice that it starts at 29. There's actually information above it. Okay. And so um, that information above it is going to inhibit you from being able to just click on it and say, hey, give this to me. So just highlight all of it and then do insert pivot table and I'm going to put it into an existing worksheet uh, and I'm going to go down to 3-2-2 uh, confidence interval proportion and I'm going to put it right here okay and then I'm going to say okay create a confidence interval for film and video um, category so I want you to look at category let's see here oh that doesn't work Oh, no, it does. Okay. So, country, name, main category. Okay. And so then from main category, we are going to put film and video. So that's going to be 25 out of, you look down here, 150. Okay. Uh, let's uh, change this up. Let's do failed. Uh, let's see here. Status, rather. You notice it says status failed status and then we're going to do failed so it's going to be 62 out of 150 so then we do equals 62 divided by 150 okay and so the uh, population standard deviation uh, what we're going to do now is use uh, calculate the margin of error which is going to be uh, equals the z-score uh, multiplied by uh, the proportion so we're going to do this is the proportion okay and then it's going to be 1 minus the proportion then close those parentheses and then divided by the uh, divided by n which is 150 and then uh, Obviously, I messed something up here. Uh, let's see here. Equals E12. Oh, I know why. Because uh, we need to... I forgot to put the... There we go. So that right there is the 90%. Uh, so the way that we would interpret this is we've got this proportion. Okay. Uh, plus or minus... Uh, so the margin of error is that we are 90% confident... So I am 90% confident that uh, the actual population proportion of failed uh, events or failed uh, Kickstarter campaigns is uh well let's find the uh so this right here uh we could write this in two different ways is 41.33 percent and then we could do uh insert symbol uh plus or minus uh point two six uh or two seven percent um or uh we could write it as uh let's let's do the confidence interval and i really should have given you guys something to uh calculate the confidence interval at but equals uh proportion minus the comp uh the uh 90 percent and then equals proportion uh, plus okay so now we could write the same exact thing and put campaign is between uh, 41 point oh six seven percent and 41 point 
599 percent okay so um yeah so that's that's how we do that uh so just be uh, aware of uh that you can write it in two different ways the better way to write it in my opinion is to write it with the actual confidence interval values listed and that's really what i'm wanting um notice i am whatever percent confident this is how i want you to write it um so yeah that's how you do that and uh hopefully this will be beneficial uh for you guys to be able to know how to do that